Hey, Big Ed's back, and guess what? The time of filming this, it's Leo Day. What does that mean? I'm older now. Yes, that's right, I'm an old man. But you know what's not old? Big Ed! That definitely hasn't run its course, because he's back in another episode of 90 Day, The Last Resort? Yeah, 90 Day Fiancé has been milking it like a proverbial cow, and Big Ed is back with his partner Liz for a brand new series in which couples go on a two-week retreat to see if they can save their marriage. Because each of these couples, there's five of them, are absolutely disgusting in terms of relationships. Whew! And Big Ed, you know, of course is one of them. I'm really surprised Colt is not there. I know, I really wanted to see Big Ed and Colt, but it's mostly him and like a couple other people you might know some familiar faces, and they call it a couple's retreat, which is very funny because this is this is true. There was a movie called Couples Retreat starring Vince Vaughn, and anytime you have to base your life off Vince Vaughn, I think you're losing. I mean, I like the guy, but I don't think of him when I think of romantic leads, you know? But yeah, Big Ed and Liz are back. They've been gone for a while. Everybody thought, thank God, oops, it's over. But it's not. And now we're going to have to see if they can save their relationship. That's what we're going to take a look at today. And also, if you haven't subscribed, do so. Because it's my birthday. I have to. This is also unrelated. I was watching an old video of mine. <laughs> One of the videos got popular. It's the one about adults adopting adults. And I was just looking from a year from now and realizing how much we've grown. And I hope people have grown, not just as a fan base, but as people. I think it's just one or two minutes that I can take out to say, I think you're doing amazingly well. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I'm sure you need to hear this. You are doing fantastically. And uh, I'm so glad that you're here. Okay, let's watch this damn thing. <sighs> All right, so it starts off with they have two weeks to save their relationships. Oh, I'm so you have to read it like they have two weeks to save their relationships. Five 90 day couples are coming together in paradise. Hi, Michael. Does that look good enough? Oh, God, Jesus. Um, okay, so like if I had to suffer through looking at Angela and her beautiful body, <clears throat> So do you. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, that's the reaction your man should have when you're getting in a bikini. No, 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 not. Nope. Hell no. Why? You see all your body. I'm a sexy meemaw. Oh, God. So this is like a preview of like the whole season. They're trying to like entice you. Like they've had so many spinoffs. I don't even know which is which anymore. This is 90 day, 90 day UK, 90 day the other way. 90 days till I kick your ass. That's a John Wick special. And 90 days since I've been sober. So, it's kind of the opposite of the AA. He's more excited about seeing this girl than you. I will punch You're... you in the face if you bring... Go for it, bring it on. Jovi, 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 hey! We get this amazing shot of the guy Jovi claiming to punch Big Ed in the face. And as soon as... As he gets up, Liz stands up and he backs away. I've never seen a man so absolutely not coming through with his claim than I did Jovi. He was never going to even touch Big Ed. Ugh, what a bitch. Time to decide, are you ready to rededicate? I do love you, Michael, with all my heart, but these are divorce papers. Hilarious. I do love you, Michael. But these are divorce papers and I hate you. I don't know. I don't know what's happening there, but there's a lot going on. And the show starts off with what looks like the aftermath of Oppenheimer. There's just a man who's crumpled in... Oh, no, that's Big Ed. Sorry. So that's the intro, 90 Day The Last Resort. We're gonna see a lot of stuff. It looks like they're just trying to jam pack the action into the start to entice us to watch the whole show. Honestly, I don't know how many episodes it's gonna be. I would love to see 90 Day Fiance actually try a new formula because I would say that most of this is getting old. I'm keeping up with Big Ed just on the basis that I know that I don't think he can hold a relationship, but I am, you know, hoping to be wrong. I want everyone to be happy. Here we go. Baby, where are we going? We are How could you not like that face? I didn't see it for so long and now it just looks so good. 
How could you look at that face and not say, I wanna, I wanna sex you up to that. I know it's not, I know love is not physical, but a little bit, right? 14 days of prison, <laughs> emotional prison, right? <laughs> Here. But every show now seems to have that same through line. Every show has the same formulaic approach to things. Like at some point you gotta say, 90 Day Fiance and Love is Blind are gonna start blurring the lines between each other. Cause ni uh, 90 Day Fiance has like the ultimatum. Then through that they have like the perfect match. And then they got too hot to handle. And at some point you're like, oh, okay. Most of this is people going to a place that's cheap to film in, some resort or villa that's in a development country. They take individuals who are so broken that they get some drama out of them. But every show is just following the same formula now and you can't even tell. This is like 90 day blind. Love is fiance. Oh, look how pretty. Hello, so welcome good to Isla Bella. Hey, how you doing? Good. Yeah. Is the ocean heated? Yes. It okay, is good. Just, <laughs> just asking for a friend. How you doing? And see why she dated him. I can see why she loves him. With charm like that and devilishly good looks, how could she not? Like I always say, he looks like compressed George Clooney. All right, I just need your photo ID. Okay. Both of ours? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Would you guys like a glass of champagne? Absolutely. I'm sorry, my man. Who does he look like to you that is anyone other than him? Have you seen a man like that before? Have you seen a sentient bowling ball with no neck? I don't, I don't think there's many people around who look like him. He's, he's unique looking. Awesome, okay. I'm Ed, I'm from San Diego, California. I'm 57 years old. I will say one thing, I've been, I've been going a little heavy on the man. He's 57 and I gotta say, he looks great. Like his face looks great. Uh, you know, like you couldn't even tell he's 57. I, th I think he looks great. And this is my beautiful fiance, Liz, who is a ripe old 30. <laughs> I forgot the age difference was 27 years. The age, they're almost double each other's age. He's almost 60 and she's 30. Why are we still- I keep saying it, but like, he's literally double her age. The amount of things that they can have in common. When you draw the Venn diagrams, the stuff in the middle is just gonna be like, born. So right now, Liz and I are um, still engaged, but we have um, a barrel full of issues that we have to overcome. Okay, so Big Ed says, that there's a barrel full of issues whenever you can quantify the amount of issues you have. I think that's a problem, but okay. He started off with they're engaged, which means they're still showing the signs of love. And I think these two are like toxically together. They're intertwined by thorns, you know what I mean? They should be a healthy couple and they have the perseverance to actually be a healthy couple. I'm not even like lying here, but they both have this weird dependency on each other. Other than that, everything's perfect. <laughs> I'm so excited to finally be here. Me too. Yeah. Tell you piss me off, but how long do you think that'll be? Uh, uh, 30 minutes. How long does it take <laughs> to get to the bar? Our relationship is just full of extremes, good and bad. See, now that's a problem. And uh, you know, glad that you're now resorting to couples therapy of some sort. Th that's the thing, like, you know, sometimes you have a relationship and you're like, oh, it's so good sometimes, but then it's so bad sometimes. It means that you have to find the middle ground. And people who have ones where it's so good and so bad, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I, I firmly believe you can find a happy middle. That means that there's potential that it's so good. And then there's potential that is bad. You gotta remove that, maybe have more of that, but scale it back, scale your expectations back, and you could have a very healthy relationship. It's not the worst sign to have extremes. You just have to know yourself, and then you can like acclimate and probably bring it down. So at the tell-all, um, I got busted for lying about texting Rose. Has Ed messaged you or spoken to you the last couple months? Yeah. I don't think I have any more respect. Let me have my ring back. Oh, I just want to move on. And yet you're here at couples therapy with the big bull himself. Love is blind. <laughs> we didn't communicate for two weeks, but I recently had shoulder surgery and you, you can't move, you're completely mobile. Was the surgery because of the neck? It was hard to hold the neck on his shoulders. Can I, 
Am I allowed to say that? Is that inappropriate? Sorry. And we reconnected and she was able to be there, you know, to really take care of me. Ah, note to self, get some kind of surgery if you want her back. I have to injure my balls in some way when I go to the UK. Can you jump on the Stonehenge? I want to injure my stones. We know we love each other, that's a given. So we, we kind of started all over again. I will call you guys soon, the room is ready, okay? Okay. Oh, um, champagne? Oh, yes, champagne, yes. Can't forget that, right? Uh, you know, if for better or for worse, <laughs> till death do them part, these two uh, keep on coming back to each other. And uh, I don't know why, but maybe, you know, it's about time I concede and throw in the towel and be like, okay, maybe these two are going to actually try and make it work. Because... For whatever reason, they're, they're committed to finding each other again. No matter how far they go, they're never too far apart. And they can say all this crazy shit, but sometimes it's people and it's just like, there's no one else. And I don't know if that's true for them. I, <laughs> if this is what soulmates look like, God. But at the same time, clearly they're putting in the effort to make it work. And you got to commend that in some way. Whether it's codependency or not, if they can actually develop that independence from each other and not learn to put all their insecurities on each other, these two would have a healthy relationship. Yeah, we'll take a bottle. A bottle? There you go, guys. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. That's probably the best part of our fights. Is the makeup side. The no, makeup side. don't, okay. She calls me daddy. Oh, God. You dirty slut. She calls you daddy. You know why? Because you're fucking 27 years older than her. This might be an actual legal term at this point, man. How? This is a, not even a compliment. She's like, daddy, dad, dad. You're, you're going a bit slow there, dad. Come on, father. Huh? Papa? Come on, big papa. Oh, daddy. <laughs> you're such a dad. Oh my god, man, look, come on now. Come on. Did you see how he walked down? He walked down like an NPC from Grand Theft Auto. Nobody walks like that. Yeah, this this will do. We're only here for two weeks, right? And we're not sure what other couples will be here, but I'm sure it's gonna be a, a, a learning experience for the lot of us. I would hope so. If it's called couples retreat, where you're like doing the last resort, I would hope you learn something, man. It is nice to get away from our everyday life. We get to focus on our problems and our lives are about to get even more chaotic. We're moving to a big house in Arkansas. I have a lot of family there. I mean, it's gonna be very interesting. Okay, so, you know, from what I gathered after watching him, they're actually moving back to Arkansas, which is a big decision for both of them. Uh, big Ed loves San Diego. He, he was there the whole time, I think, with his mom. But they both uh, decided to move, and I think that's a huge decision. This shows commitment. Like, I, you know, I don't want to hate on them. I don't want to uh, just look at them and be like, all right, they're not going to make it. I'm just trying to look at the facts and see, like, okay, besides the fact that they're maybe not always the best at communicating, they clearly do want to be together, and they're actually trying this whole huge move. Moving in general is stressful, but moving halfway across the country... Together. Together into a new house, it's gonna be, you know, challenging. Well, wait till you see this. You're gonna love it. Hey. Are so, baby, if this is our therapy, I think we're gonna do just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks of this, I'm good. I chose Arkansas because when I'm around Ed's family in Arkansas, he is the best version of himself. Liz wants Arkansas because Big Ed behaves better. Also, seen before that, the drinking champagne and another drink. Is this, this therapy session just gonna be people inebriated spilling their feelings? Because this is not good therapy. Have you ever seen a therapist who said, why don't you, why don't you shoot up heroin before you come see me? The truth will come out then. Anyway, yeah, I don't know if this is more Liz's decision or Big Ed's. If I had to guess, I'd say Liz because Big Ed loves San Diego. But um, if he's willing to still do it with her, again, I would say that shows some commitment from both of them. Because uh, Liz is not from Arkansas either. And it brings out the best version of me. And we have the biggest support from all his family members out there. It's like a reset for our lives. We basically have two weeks to get our together. Well, I'm stressed. I've, we have so much bull we need to fix and work through. What can we do differently so we don't, so I don't screw it up? Well, big picture, I need you to behave. I need you to just stop 
talking to girls or flirting. How does he feel? For? I'm sorry, but like, how does he flirt with? I'm sorry, it's just. I know, I know, I'm not like a great looking person either. I, I get it, I get it, but like that. When I'm 57, I don't think I could hit on someone. I don't think I could even. Bro, he got some self confidence to be like, look at me. I mean, sorry, sorry, sorry. Look at me. Now touch me. Touch my belly. Rub it for good luck. I'm big Ed. Ed reaching out to his ex or being on a dating profile. Yeah, I'm scared Ed will cheat on me. I'm just so used to him finding a way to push me aside that. I can sense that you don't trust me. <laughs> <laughs> what are your spider senses tingling? Can you imagine Big Ed being Spider-Man? They'd need like a lot more leather in that suit. <laughs> Tailors in New York are gonna be like, I don't have enough. Come on, your ass cheeks are gonna hang out. I can only do the first half, okay? <laughs> God. I sense that uh, that you don't trust me. Yeah, she just said she's afraid that you're gonna cheat on her again, dude. You, are you seriously, did you zone out until that point? And that, that you think that's gonna happen. I can just feel that. Like, And I want that to go away. Like, I want you to feel in your heart that you can trust me. We have issues. Yes, but... I'm very emotionally invested into you, clearly. You have to you have to understand things that I need. I need more emotional support from you. I need your whole heart in it. I need you to be committed. Like, it's easy to walk away if I don't feel like your whole heart's invested into it. Well said, Big Ed, well said. She just poured out a heart. She's like, I need you to be emotionally invested in me. I need you to do this. He's like, I wonder what's for dinner on this island. Do you think they have live pigs? What did you say? What? Yep, I, uh, I will do that one. We keep saying it's our last breakup. We keep saying, yeah, I'm not going back to her. I'm not going back to him. And we keep doing it. We're at a point where we need to figure out if we're going to have a future together or just officially part our ways. If we don't walk out of this together, it makes it easier to say goodbye if I don't move with him. Yeah, you just said goodbye so many times, I don't believe that. It's almost romantic. It's almost sweet that the options for you guys are either break up or make it work because you guys have come back together so many times that it's probably easier that you fix yourselves just so that it works. That's so disgustingly cute in all the wrong ways. This is news. No, it isn't. I didn't realize. No. You know how serious it has become for her. Yeah, I don't even know if I'm going to Arkansas. Okay, so seriously, Big Ed and Liz have the exact same problems they had before. I thought they were going to be more committed about some stuff, but it turns out everything could just be a ruse. I don't know. But the next scene we see is Big Ed and Liz meeting all the other couples. And one person is Jovi, who is from the last series. I would say that's a surprise, but we saw it at the very start of the show. Oh my god, Jovi, your favorite, uh, your best here. Oh. I brought you a present, Jovi. Oh, perfect. <laughs> I brought him. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm worried that Ed can be a distraction for everybody because he's narcissistic and all that he wants is just talk about himself. So, yeah. Happy surprise. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> um, your drama is not our drama. <laughs> Joby, how you doing, buddy? Good, how are you? You look good. Hello. Hello, I promise to be nice. <laughs> I don't have a problem with Jovi and Yara right now, but I can already feel the tension between Jovi and Ed. Jovi tried to do me dirty at the tell-all, and I never got over that. Yeah, so Big Ed and Jovi have some issues, but, you know, it's hard to have issues when you're in the same place fighting for your relationship. I think maybe at this point... Worry less about the other person, more about your own relationship if I was either of them. But uh, yeah, Jovi and Big Ed do not get along. You gave him back the ring today, like, you didn't even try to talk about what was going on. You were just like, okay, here. You just give up and walk away? Listen to me. You, do, you do not talk to first women all, like that. First of all, you don't know my situation. I don't. So shut the f up. And I think once they dive into therapy, they're not on the same page. And they're already married. I'm kind of shocked to even see yeah. them here. After the tell-all, it's going to be very interesting and intense going through therapy with these couples. Have you been drinking the whole day? It's nighttime. It's a long... Drink a lot, man. I guess his surface area, if you, like, calculate the velocity of this man and the, the circumference and the spherical value, he can probably drink about 20 to 30 liters of pure poison before actually feeling it, so... 
I'm pretty sure I left New York with some enemies that I'll be spending the next couple of weeks with. And even though there could be some animosity, I'm going to stay focused on myself and Liz and try to get something out of it. I do want to apologize. Thank I you. I, I will apologize you. to you as well. My behavior. I'm so sorry. And to you. I have okay. a Actually, you were sticking to my side. Hey, you know what? I got to give credit where credit's due. That's a good, good move on his behalf. And hopefully we won't see any... Oh, no. Remember when, at the start, they're going to fight each other. So, this goes nowhere. But thanks for... Thanks, 90 Day Fiance, for, for thinking that any of them changed. But they were so overwhelmed that they didn't remember that. Fresh start here for everyone. Okay. Cheers, That's fresh start. Here's to a fresh yeah. start. I want to start my life with Liz and, you know, and you found a beautiful four bedroom, two bath, saved so much money. I traded in my Beamer for a what riding lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least you know uh, you how did. to mow the grass. I don't I think. Did. Do you? Yeah. I used to, that's how I, I made like money. As a, as a and then they made another couple, and I don't really know much about the other couple, but every time I see the guy and his teeth, the gap between them looks like the financial difference between the lower class and upper class in America, and I find that funny. Five I grew up in Arkansas. No, I just said at least he knows how to mow the grass. Huh? You've been there since June, and he's never mowed my grass, so, I mean, it is Your lawnmower don't work. Uh, that time I tackled your grass, you didn't even have an up-to-date rake. I was over there struggling. Okay. Look, At I'm least a city you know boy. how to mow the grass. I think I need some grass for this conversation, man. This is just a this is just, this is just a horrible situation for couples. Constant bickering, too much liquoring. Oh man, where's the dickering? <laughs> okay. I will oh, cement yeah. all that. I can feel the tension between Molly and Kelly. It's not a good way to start therapy. If they're there that far apart, I don't know if, if they could even have a chance or they're gonna... In a weird way, it looks like Big Ed and Liz somehow aren't the worst couple. I mean, oh man, every other couple there has some intense issues as well. I just left this next scene in because I found it hilarious. It's one dude screaming at the top of his lungs at the guy Michael who is somewhere in Africa. But it's as if he thinks he needs to scream to Africa to get to Michael even give each other a chance. Michael! Hello! Hello, Michael! <laughs> Michael! <laughs> Hello, Michael! <laughs> and then the guy had to mute it from the other end and be like, oh, okay, I can hear you, bro. And so it turns out the therapy has three different therapizers and they all are going to work together. As we know, 14 days in a retreat where you're all liquored up, can absolutely change the landscape of your relationship that 10 years couldn't before. These shows are great. Well, welcome to your couple's retreat. We need you guys to open up your hearts to each other, open up your eyes to the issues, but most importantly, open up your ears and listen. My name is Dr. Jason Prendergast. I'm your certified temperament therapist. I have been a therapist for many years, and uh, generally, therapists, you know, we, we need to listen more than speak. Okay, can you keep not saying therapy? Like, it's just... You have to convince me that you're a therapist that many times. First job of a therapist, which I am, is that a therapist says things that a therapist would say to their patients. And I gotta have some therapatience of my own to even get therapatience because I'm a therapist and I therapize. The first therapy session is really about the observation. Molly and Kelly, uh, they didn't sit next to each other. They sat about, what, three, four chairs apart. Definitely, we picked up the vibe that something's up. You think so? Are you a therapist or a fucking Sherlock Holmes character? My God, you picked that up, did you? Couple sitting four seats apart, and you thought to yourself, I think there's something wrong. Good for you, doctor. How many, how many years of school did you go to? Two days? I'm Dr. Janie Lacey. I'm your relationship trauma expert. And I'm P.D. Silver, licensed therapist and a soul coach. And we are your problem. <laughs> <laughs> soul coach. You ever get the feeling some people just make up their fucking titles at this point? I'm a relationship trauma expert from the head to the chest area. I'm, I'm, I'm a doctor of gray. That's, that's what I do. I've studied for 20 years to get to that. <laughs> Let's hope they still want to be therapists when they're done with all of us couples. That's a good point. Yeah. What attracted you in the beginning? <laughs> I'm in this restaurant and I see this beautiful girl, and she was standing right behind Liz. <laughs> yeah, Big Ed, you know, he's, he's certainly, when he's comfortable, he's, 
he's affable enough. Like I can see, I can understand to a degree why Liz likes him. She's probably like, oh, you, he must add a little joy into her life in some aspects. I don't know if it's worth all the pain and the fatness, but yeah. This is why you're here. <laughs> this is what drives me crazy with Ed. He can't not, seem to not keep my this bottom, shut. Not my bottom lip, my mouth. What brings the two of you here? We are here because we've had a lot of issues with infidelity. So honestly, the episode uh, that teases Big Ed and Liz's return to me was a underwhelming mess. Like it talks about them moving to Arkansas and their relationship and then glosses over into other couples. And if I was a 90 day exec, I would save the other couples thing for later because I genuinely, I think most people are even interested in the show because of Big Ed and Liz. And I know they're dragging it out so that in a few episodes, whenever they decide to put them out, we can actually see the problems between Liz and Big Ed and they will definitely fluctuate. But as of today, like I watched the whole episode and they really didn't seem too problematic. The other couples, however, whew, like for instance, this couple who is not part of the series and I don't know if I'll do anything on the other couples, but if you want me to, please leave it in the comments and I'll actually talk about it. But there's this other couple, Kalani and Guy, I don't know his name. And the guy basically gets mouth herpes. <laughs> That's <laughs> sounded like it's a normal thing from cheating. Then he gives a whole pass and he says, you can kiss whoever you want. So Asuelu went to Samoa to visit his dad. While he was there, he went drinking. He supposedly just kissed someone. Was He was FaceTiming me and he stuck his tongue out and his tongue was white. And I was like, that's a yeast infection. You have thrush. So you either kiss someone here or you kiss someone down there. Um, and then he disclosed that someone had offered to give him a job. A good job? Nice. If someone asked to give me a good job, I'd say, yeah, hell yeah. I'll give you a good job, buddy. And he accepted it. So, um, so then to make it even or fair, then he said I could have a hall pass and then I could go kiss someone if I wanted to. Uh, they also have kids, I believe. So this is fantastic. Remember that movie Hall Pass with Owen Wilson? Why is most of the show just based upon romantic comedies? Uh, everyone knows this shit is not gonna work. Polani, did you take the hall pass? I did take the hall pass. You did? Damn, I wish I had your guts. As a therapist, I do not believe the hall pass is a good idea at all. Oh, yeah, okay, Dr. Sherlock Holmes, again, fantastic. It's fantastic assessment of the situation. Well, I would be more surprised if he's like, in my defense, whole passes work exceptionally well. When my wife gave me one, I gave so many people the business. You're inflicted more wounds, more pain, more suffering. It's a whole different element now that you've added to this list of problems they already have. Yeah, you pr are pretty much effectively ruining any walls that you've built up, like in terms of, you know, pillars of strength get crushed down whenever you're like doing this out of guilt or anything. If you're having a healthy and sustainable relationship, no. Whole pass isn't gonna fix things. Just like a marriage won't fix issues in the relationship. You wouldn't give me a whole pass, would you? No. It's an upside down pineapple lose, lose situation. You're, nobody ever wins. Somebody always gets hurt. What the fuck does that mean? It's an upside down pineapple. What? Is that a thing? Upside down pineapple. On a cruise ship, the secret symbol of an upside down pineapple is regularly used as a code for swinging or wife swapping. Uh, in most cases, an illustrated and upside down pineapple is fixed to the cabin door of a guest interested in swinging and partner swapping. You know, I wouldn't have known this because first of all, I don't go on cruises. Second of all, if I went on cruises, I wouldn't go with my wife in order to swap her out with another one. And thirdly, why are you ruining pineapples for me? The story goes from bad to worse to bad worse. For me, it's really hard because I give her the permission to kiss somebody. When I say that, I have trust for her that she's not going to do that. I don't understand how someone can tell you you can do something and you do it. Anyway, yeah, the problem with these two is the girl not only gave the guy the business and eventually had sensual relations with him, is the fact that this guy, his whole past said, you can kiss another guy and she took it to the extreme. And not only that, she developed a God honest relationship with him and doesn't know if she wants to stick with this guy. Now he's crying. 
just because he got a yeast infection. And I just keep saying the same thing. Isn't yeast the thing on bread? If I kiss bread, will I get a bread infection? I don't, am I inbred if I put my tongue in bread? What? And then they're upset. You gave me a hall pass, I took it. I wanted to come here to fully come clean to him. We did kiss each other. It escalated further to oral sex. And then after that, it escalated into actual sex. Oh, a poor dude, man. Can't get a yeast infection without catching a break, huh? Tough luck, buddy. I don't really have anything to say about those two because I don't really know their story. But yeah, if you know about them, want me to take a look, I, I can. I just need to actually go back in time and actually see what their story is. But that is like the end of the episode. Like, like I said, Big Ed and Liz seem like the most normal couple out of the lot at the moment. I'm sure things are gonna change in the next episode. I think 90 Day was just like blue ballsing us into the next one. So I, I guess I'll be waiting for the next episode of Big Ed. But here's a quick sequence of things to come. This is like ground zero for all of us. We all have to work on. Go! Forward! I'll tap slow down. I think he can see. So that's cheating, huh? Call me a cheater, bitch. Come on, bro. Ed's a douchebag. Yeah, so Ed gets called a douchebag, and he calls someone a bitch. Good. Great. Can't wait till the next episode. This looks very promising. Another great series done by 90 Day Fiance. Wait, this is this should just be called 90 Day Fiance. Let's milk the titties of Big Ed until people think he is no longer relevant. My goodness. He started off with a bang, came out as the breakout star of 90 Day Fiance. He was everything wrong with America, the archetypical American going to another land, trying to woo a woman due to his American status. And now he is just a caricature of himself, just doing stupid things. Whenever you get a tattoo of yourself on your leg, you know that you've lost yourself in the source. But hey, I really wanna see where it goes. I mean, I'm, like I said, morbidly curious. I would be doing the next episode. So tell me if you like it, tell me if you're happy about the return of Big Ed. Uh, if anyone else is a 16 Leo baby, happy birthday, happy birthday to everyone in August. Take care. Down in the dirt, that's where you find me. Drown in the bed, she's to the lively.